here. One of the unique situations we face is the fact that we truly are powerless to affect our government. And our government has run amok. Look at the parallel of Bradley Manning. Here you have a PFC who has the sense of justice and the integrity to make a judgment that what he sees happening and what the military brass are reporting and the White House are continuing to extend to the people is not factual. And so he takes it upon himself to, and he understands clearly when he swore allegiance, he swore allegiance to the Constitution. He didn't swear allegiance to any general, to any president. He swore allegiance to defend this country from external and internal. And what he's doing and what he's done is, is of course, to expose internal inconsistencies in our government for actual fraud and deceit of the American people. When Bradley was first uh, arrested, uh, the military put out a statement. That's the reason why they have this excuse to put him on a uh, 24-hour suicide watch. He was not suicidal, but uh, they made the statement, well, he was emotional. You know, well, my God, who in the face of what you see today in our country can't get emotional about it? And of course, that's exactly... So they've used that as an excuse to prosecute him. Well, they're not prosecuting. They're just keeping him incarcerated, hoping for a break of some evidence and linkage with uh, WikiLeaks and Bradley. And, and i and I got to tell you, it's the dumbest thing our military has ever done is to incarcerate and arrest him. And if they put him on trial, you will be able to see, because his attorneys will be able to expose the underbelly, what will be exposable, because of course the military always say, oh, you can't release this information because it affects national defense. Well, the information being released does protect the people because of the distorted view we have on national defense. The, the, the dumbest thing I can say about the American people, and it's, it's shameful. Here we spend more money on defense than all the rest of the world put together, and there's nobody that is literally a threat to us. Now, you'd think that this meager crowd would be joined by millions of people taken to the streets and saying, you are squandering our treasure, and you're not doing anything about it, except exacerbating it? Here, the fault, I really want to be critical of Obama right now. I had uh, the pleasure to go ahead and debate him in the course of the uh, first debates before they threw me out in September 7th. And, uh, and I had charged Obama with uh, his views on, when he was speaking to AIPAC, he made the statement that, oh, what we're going to do is everything is on the table. Well, that's code within the system that you're prepared to use nuclear devices offensively. Now, as horrible as that is, that is American policy and has been American policy since the Second World War. We are prepared to use nuclear devices offensively. Now, the two biggest things I'd like to hit on uh, with respect uh, to our government and what's going wrong is this whole nuclear. Now you saw all the fanfare about the Americans patting themselves on the back and the Russians patting themselves on the back over the fact of they decreased, quote, the nukes by 200. We have, we have 10,000, Russians have more than that. They're supposed to be dismantling. We have, as part of the vote in the Senate, to get the Republicans, those insane people, to go along with the START Treaty they increased by $180 billion the amount spent on nukes. Now, if you think that's a diminution of nuclear capability, then you really don't understand what's going on. It is an increase in nuclear capability. And ask yourself, who on earth would we nuke today? There's nobody. In fact, it would be the height of gross immorality to ever use a nuclear device again. We would nuke ourselves. And yet, well, we probably would, yeah. morally, for sure. Uh, but, and so that continues unabated. They're, we're spending hundreds of millions of dollars in this area without, without reason. 
Now there's another area that doesn't get much press. And of course you're probably aware, as I am, that we built eight uh, silos for missile defense in Alaska. It cost over a hundred billion dollars. A total waste of money. The uh, bulletin of atomic scientists had a summary uh, story about it. It said a, a, uh, a threat, uh, a, no, a, uh, a device that doesn't work for a threat that doesn't exist. And there is no threat to us with respect to the whole issue of, uh, uh, of missile defense. This, is a, this was a, a fantasy of uh, Ronald Reagan, and it's a fantasy that continues to be, be la belabor us because of the amount of money that we continue to spend. But what it is, it's an effort to arm space. That's what the nuclear defense is about. It's not the, the ability to hit another missile coming in. It's to arm space. And this is probably the most suicidal thing we can do. Because if there was a war in space, it would cripple our entire economy and the economy of the world. We'd all be alive, but we'd have no eyes. We'd have no communication systems. This would all be destroyed by the debris that would be left in space. And this is what is ongoing uh, in the Air Force as they continue to try and develop uh, these weapons and there's nobody else doing it. Well, the Chinese do a little bit of it just to show that they could catch up if they wanted to, but it's all us. Nobody's a threat to us, but we're the insane leadership of the world in this regard. Let me just talk about WikiLeaks for one second. Uh, WikiLeaks, uh, Julian Assange, isn't it something beautiful that it yes. took an Australian to turn around and figure out the technology so that we could begin to do what? to break the barrier of secrecy that surrounds our government and other governments for that matter. And, and so when you see people like Joe Biden saying, oh, he's a technocrat, or you see uh, a former presidential candidate who has a TV show uh, saying that we, he should be executed, this is, this is preposterous. I've written extensively on secrecy, and I've got to tell you, when I was 23 years old, I was the top secret control officer in the Communications Intelligence Service. At 23, I could classify and declassify. When I was 41, when they sent over the Pentagon Papers to the Senate, I could only read them under guard and couldn't take any notes. Does that give you an idea of how ridiculous our whole secrecy and confidentiality system exists? 80, 90% of what we classify should not be classified. It's just that simple. And of course, that is the underpinning that is destroying our democracy. Yes, yes, our yes. democracy will only survive if the people know. Now, this crowd here knows because you claw at the information to get below the mainstream fraud that's going on. So you know, but that's not good enough because we don't have the numbers. Mainstream media is busy watching all of the sport activities in these glorious stadiums that are built around the country, which of course is essentially what Rome did to try to sustain their empire. We are an empire in decline, and our leadership is whistling through the cemetery. I don't know of any other way to, to do it other than what you're doing, and that is to express your views. Someday it will be in the majority.